Hey, I'm Derek, it's me, Derek, and welcome back to every Zeebo game ever. Part two, sorry for the delay on this one. No intro, let's get right into it. Though you should probably watch the other episodes. But, you know, nothing about the Zeebo makes a whole lot of sense, so it's fitting that you watch these videos out of order. So, you know what? Enjoy. Go nuts. Thanks for watching. When we last left, we were moving into October 2009. Zeebo had been out for three to four months, depending on your region of Brazil, and had released 19 of its eventual 57 games. We've seen a few legit bangers, some good garbo, a lot of mediocre shovelware, and some hot flaming trash. More importantly, we've seen Tech Toy Digital, which is basically the Zeebo people themselves, starting to get some real performance from the system. They actually seem to be improving at least in terms of the Zeebo. Now, at this point, I have to point out that there were two big things that happened for the Zeebo. September was the first price drop, and October was the launch in Mexico. If you'll remember, the Zeebo was supposed to be an affordable system for low-income households, but the launch price of 500 AIs was, and I probably don't have to tell you this, not the right price point for low-income houses. I explained this in further detail in the past Morum episode, but dropping the price was a huge step for getting Zeebos into the market. One day you went, wait, I got a great idea. Yeah? And it's Zeebo. <laughs> the other important step, Zeebo launching in Mexico. Hey, and that is two continents, that is both hemispheres, baby. Zeebo is officially Mr. Worldwide. Zeebo! This, though, is why I'm going by the Brazilian release dates as the official release dates, because there's about a four-month head start in Brazil. It's just easier. Of course, no disrespect to Mexico. Plus, they started out October 2009 with a banger. Tekken 2, the system's first fighting game. Namco, so far not having the best showing on the system, and this would be their last Zeebo game, uh, are going out on top because, I mean, well, I'm no Tekken expert, but this feels like a pretty solid port of one of the best 3D fighters of the era. I mean, that era being the mid 90s, but smooth character models, great frame rate. Like, am I crazy here or does this look pretty good compared to the PS1 version? But then again, you stare at Zeebo games long enough, they just start to look good. And being comparable to a PlayStation 1 game is hardly a win in 2009, but I'll take it. It takes a full minute to load the game, but that is way ahead of Ridge Racer and Bejeweled. It looks like it's got the full roster of unlockables, though I'll be honest, I spent most of my time grinding a double dragon to unlock that roster. In fact, I couldn't freaking beat Paul, you goofy-haired son of a bitch. It's probably a good time to say that I'm not very good at fighting games. Or wait, can I blame it on this shitty Zeebo controller? I actually went to redeem myself on the PlayStation 1 port, so maybe it turns out I'm actually pretty all right at Tekken. It was just a shitty controller. Yeah, let's go with that. I would love to one day see a Tekken expert actually evaluate this game, but to a filthy casual like me, it seemed like a solid enough port. But of course, it's missing a ton of the flair and style. No CG cutscenes of any kind. I was able to find footage of somebody actually good at this game and beating it, and the endings are all just this screen. Good stuff. But being fair, these were digital-only games on a 3G network. Zeebo games tended to be only a few MB in size. So ain't got no room for compressed animation videos on that download. No character voices at all, so fights don't quite have the same energy. Though the soundtrack is not a clown show like Ridge Racer Zeebo's soundtrack. Tekken 2's OST is already pretty sample-heavy and makes the Zeebo transition pretty gracefully, I'd say. Overall, solid. Though Tekken 2 Zeebo is still one of those why do you even exist ports and one of these series' strangest games. First of all, I think it is generally agreed that Tekken 3 is superior to 2. So why didn't Zeebo get that one? People are just gonna think, wait, was Tekken 3 too advanced for Zeebo? But then again, after doing the absolute bare minimum with Ridge Racer, it is a minor miracle Namco didn't just port the original Tekken. What is the message you're sending to people? Tekken 1's too old, but Tekken 3 is too advanced? I mean, port Tekken 2, but just call it like Tekken Zeebo. Games lie like that all the time to make them sound like a system exclusive. And hell, the logo is practically already there for you. C come on! Another weird thing, Tekken 2 Zeebo uses the announcer from Tekken 5, even though Tekken 6 had been out. Round one. Round one. Fight. Fight. Not to mention Tekken 5 on PS2 
had the first three Tekken games as bonuses, and I'm sure getting a bootleg copy of that was no problem at the time. And remember, the system was also trying to legitimize gaming as a way to combat the gray market bootleg scene. But I have to point out this really wholesome exchange that I saw on Twitter. Tekken 2 Zebo was at least one person's childhood. And what the hell? That makes it worth it to me. So put it up there with Tekken Advanced as a weird, but surprisingly pretty solid port of a Tekken classic. But Tekken 2 had a buddy, also released on October 8th, 2009, was Galaxy on Fire. This is outer space aerial dogfighting, uh, which means I better not use any music from this game, lest I get hit with a copyright claim and lose all my revenue for the day, or what we call an SSFF lore, getting Armageddon squatted. But Galaxy on Fire is dogfighting in the sense that it is not on rails like Star Fox, but battling in big open 3D spaces. And right away, I was really impressed by the striking way the ships streak across the screen. It just looks, it just looks cool. But here, let me boil this down for you. I am terrible at aerial combat and typically do not like these games. But I actually played this game for a while, longer than I'd really anticipated I would. At first it was a little boring. It at least seemed to control and run pretty well, but I started to get sucked in. Combat is pretty fun. I mean, the red streaking stuff is really cool, but it also makes enemies easier to track. And they even give you crosshairs to assist you on where to lead your shots correctly. Though when you get hit, there's this really weird, like, clang clang noise. Sounds like someone pounding on a metal trash can. Did Lars Ulrich help with the audio on this game? My lifestyle determines my death style. My lifestyle determines my death style. Finishing missions gives you credits that you can spend on ships, weapons, shield generators. You can also sell cargo for credit. At first, your weapons are super slow. Luckily, combat itself is engaging to look at. But after a few missions, I had a better rig with more firepower. It was really cool. This game also has a lot of dialogue, setting up a lot of lore. In fact, I was shocked to learn that this series is rather long running and has a very passionate following. Damn, 800 entries on a wiki they don't even update anymore. But overall, Galaxy on Fire is burning it up as one of the better Zebo games. It even has the decency to offer a language option and put Brazilian Portuguese first. Galaxy on Fire is a Fish Labs joint and would not be their only Zebo game. Proving that there is life after Zebo, Fish Labs are still alive and well with Galaxy on Fire as their flagship game. This first game was also ported to iOS, Symbian, and Android. It even got a few sequels that are still on iOS and a remake you can get on Switch. It is a bit of a storied franchise with a strong fan base. But again, it says a lot about the choices that I've made in my life that the Zebo is the first time that I am playing it. Fish Labs is part of Deep Silver and keeps the lights on by doing port work. For example, they are responsible for putting Saints Row 3 and 4 on Switch and Stadia. Now, if only they had put something on the Ouya and Engage, they'd have the Disaster Console EGOT, which I guess would be the Sans. Hey, Sterek again, quick break from the bunker, from the underground. I just want to say, this show could not and would not have ever been possible without the support of every single one of our Patreon supporters. Two bucks, two, two, two bucks is all it takes to get to be a part of the Stop Skeletons and Fighting Patreon. It's all it takes to get in. And this summer, we launched a brand new Patreon exclusive show called Uncle Derek Underground. I got a Google Doc of show ideas a mile long, plus I'm taking requests. Every month I put the poll up and everybody on our Patreon gets to vote on what is the new episode, what's the topic of that month's Uncle Derek Underground. Is it too, is it too crazy for YouTube? Sometimes it is. Like talking about McDonald's games, talking over E3 press conferences, sitting in front of a chicken coop to talk about video game passwords. And the video topic that just won for December is gonna be an ode to split screen multiplayer games. If you wanna get this content, it's only two bucks uh, to get into the Stop Skeletons from Fighting, patreon.com slash Stop Skeletons from Fighting. Before the holidays, we're gonna post uh, probably my favorite one that we did this year. Uh, I talked about weird video game cards. That's gonna be coming to the YouTube channel for free uh, for everyone. But if you wanna see new content from the Uncle Derek underground, from here in the underground bunker, well, that's only at patreon.com slash Stop Skeletons from Fighting. Again, it's just two bucks to get in. Uh, we really, really appreciate the support, but okay. Back to the Zebo. We will see more non-Galaxy themed Zebo action from Fish Labs a little later. But now it's down to Tektoy themselves to keep this release streak going. On October 15th, one week after Tekken 2 and Galaxy on Fire, there was Zebo Sports Tennis. More first party stuff, but not the Zebo Extreme series. This is the first in a line of me versus Wii Sports knockoff games. And it really, it speaks for itself. Look, it's, it's tennis.
You can choose from a list of silly characters. I, of course, had to go with Cowman and uh, Hippie Milf as my doubles partner. And yeah, it's, it's tennis. It's got a cute and pleasant aesthetic. Uh, the AI players are absolutely terrible. They pose no challenge whatsoever, constantly hitting things out of bounds or not even swinging. But my AI buddy was crushing it. So maybe the opponents get tougher the further you get. Or maybe there's another way, a quicker way that I can add some difficulty to this game. That's right, it is boomerang time again. Here we go. Zebo Sports Tennis, was it harder with the boomerang? Well, I played four matches and I was able to hit the ball three times with the boomerang. Serving the ball was no problem, but you gotta swing like a full second or two ahead to actually connect. So yeah, big shocker here, the boomerang is terrible. But thankfully, so is the computer. Again, they kept throwing everything out of bounds or just not even swinging, just letting the ball float past their head. I only successfully returned the ball three times, but I went four and oh. But you know, probably just a fluke. I must have just gotten really lucky. Actually, no! Check out this video that was uploaded to the official Zebo channel. This guy was struggling to hit the ball too, but they were still winning matches. Also, at one point, they just outright admit they're ripping off the Wii by putting a Wiimote photoshopped with the buttons from the Zebo boomerang on it. What are you doing? The balls on these people, wow! I guess you're lucky that one of the thousand people that have ever watched this video wasn't a lawyer from Nintendo. We will see more Zebo Sports titles later, but this is the definition of shovelware. What's next? Halloween would bring two new games for the Zebo. one being the system's only RPG, Xenonia. Coming from Gameville, or Gam Evil, Xenonia is a Korean mobile game, a sprite-based action RPG with an awesome pixel aesthetic, satisfying combat. It's a bit of a story-heavy Zelda clone with a lot of loot, specking, and quests. It's kind of a weird game to release on Halloween, and it doesn't appear to be very deep, but it's classic RPG fare with lots to explore, lots of monsters, lots of loot. It's a game I could see myself sinking some hours into while watching long YouTube videos or marathoning podcasts. The language barrier prevented me from enjoying what was a really long intro. There wasn't any kind of language options, so I was just like pushing past all the dialogue. I just wanted to get to the hacking and slashing. And then once I did, I was having a pretty good time. It's definitely one of the better Zebo games, and at the time, it had only just left Korea, so it was a decent get for the Zebo. But looking at it today, though, it is nothing special. Not, you're not really missing out on anything, because much like Galaxy on Fire, Xenonia is a bit of a cult classic, ported to just about everything, including DSi and PSP. So check this out. Xenonia would get five sequels, the next four of which were released over the next three years, becoming an Android and iOS mainstay. Parts four and five are still on the App Store right now. This is another problem with the Zebo. Near as I can tell, Zenonia Zebo is a pretty faithful port, but not a garbo curiosity like Resident Evil 4. So what we're left with is a decent port on a weird system of a game that is available elsewhere. Once we get Zebo emulation, I would absolutely watch a Zenonia superfan break this port down, but otherwise, yeah, what's next? One more game for Halloween 2009, Zebo Extreme Baja, our third Zebo Extreme game which are, again, some of the few legitimate Zebo exclusives, and it's a fine, I guess, racing game. Like the other Zebo Extreme games, it's one of the best running on the system, which is not really high praise, but there's nothing really special about it. I mean, the physics are kind of impressive. You can drive on the walls, and the tracks are certainly never dull. But man, it is so hard to steer. You got turbo, just like the other two Zebo Extreme games, so you can go hella fast if you want to. But again, like, man, trying to keep this thing on the road? Forget it. Now, maybe if I had stuck with it, I would have gotten a better handle on the controls. But I was not going to stick with it. Had to see how the boomerang controller was. Guess what? Absolutely unplayable. Even worse than Air Race. And, uh, and that's it. I don't know what else I can really say about the Zebo Extreme games, but yeah, that's it. And that closes out October 2009. Or the Zebo. Let's do a quick recap though. Between September 28th and October 31st, Zebo fans were eating well. That's 10 games in about 30 days. This would be the most prolific time for the Zebo, only being beaten by the system launch, which also had 10 games, but day one for most of the country. And it wasn't a moment too soon, as November 2009 would see the Zebo drop in price one final time, just in time for the holidays. Which was good news, because November, Zebo would see zero new games! Goose egg!
Nothing! Not a single game during the busiest shopping time of the year. Which, uh, for the rest of the world, I don't know if you remember this, 2009 was kind of a gigantic year for gaming. I'm not exactly sure how fast new games made their way to the Brazilian gray market bodegas, but holiday 2009 on modern consoles was Arkham Asylum, Halo 3 ODST, Dragon Age Origins, Uncharted 2, Modern Warfare 2, Left 4 Dead 2, Assassin's Creed 2, New Super Mario Bros. Wii, and of course the game of the decade, DJ Hero! We the best! But after Halloween, Zebo had nothing for six weeks. That's right, Zebo fans were blessed with greatness on December 14th, ending the drought with heavy weapons. Oh, sorry, uh, heavy weapon, singular. It's just, it's just one weapon, but a weapon that's heavy, heavy with that Zebo hype. You know what I'm saying? One day you went, wait, I got a great idea. Yeah, and it's Zebo. <laughs> Okay, jokes aside, this is another pop cap banger. I think one of the very few games that was not an absolute monster hit. And it's, it's, it's great. But like, seriously, six weeks and this is it? We cannot close out the year with this. What are we doing here? Though it certainly seems like something the Zebo would do, they did not close out the year with a game that's been on Xbox Live Arcade for, I think, four years at that point. Mercifully, Zebo would close out its first year with four more new games, starting with one game released on the 16th and then a trio released on the 21st. So with Heavy Weapon, that is five games in the month of December. And not that it's really fair, but I did a quick search. Turns out PlayStation 2 also had five games released in December 2009. But anyway, first we have the next Zebo sports game, Volleyball. And friends, you are not ready for how terrible the computer players are in this game. Again, so long as you are able to consistently serve the ball, your chances of winning are extremely high. Not to mention that watching the computer players attempt to return the ball is honestly more fun than actually playing. That is, unless you are using the boomerang, then good goddamn luck with that. Actually, I did eventually get the timing down with the motion controls and I won the match. Um, but at any rate, hey, it's definitely volleyball, all right? It looks cute. It's got more silly characters. It seems to run fine. But there's no story mode or campaign or even mini games. <sighs> Again, it's just shovelware. That's all this is. What more can I say? That's Zebo Sports Volleyball. Next, the first in that group of three released on the 21st, Rally Master Pro. Not just another racing game, but another Fish Labs joint. And before we jump in, uh, there is pedigree here. Rally Master Pro was apparently the best mobile game of 2008. Okay, well, how's it shape up on the Zebo? Tip, don't drink and drive. <laughs> Man, I'll get drunk as fuck and play Zebo. Y'all can't stop me. Rally Master Pro is in fact an incredibly sharp game that gives the Zebo Extreme games a run for their money performance wise. And it achieves this by being time trial based. There's just only one car on the road. It's less absolute lunacy, which might be a knock against it, but it's Nice to play something on the Zebo that's nice, though it is not without its difficulty. In career mode, you play nine tracks, and between races, the health and condition of your car carries over. For example, I was crushing the times, no problem, but I let myself get a little careless and actually lost a race. Though I was still first place overall, my car needed some serious TLC. I was ignoring that in between races, you can repair your car like healing between rounds and punch out. I still managed to secure the gold, but Mark was closing in on me those last few races. Still, I was feeling cocky and jumped into the professional circuit and quickly learned I cannot drive for sh in the rain. Oh god, there goes the hood. That was That's probably important. Yeah, in just the second race, my car looked like I was playing Burnout. The controls are simple, but there's a challenging level of nuance to Rally Master Pro. Not to mention, it's a solid, smooth racing game. Honestly, almost looks like an early PS2 game, a Dreamcast game maybe? It's kind of no frills, just a fundamental experience, but I don't know. As I run through the Zebo gauntlet here, it is a relief seeing a racing game that just works and plays and looks competent. It really feels like they were getting the best they could out of the system here, which is meaningful, especially because the other two games released alongside Rally Master Pro would be the final two Zebo Extreme games, Floater and Jetboard. We gotta start with Floater because you know I'm all about that good Garbo, right? Well, here is a game that looks like a toilet. First of all, are we racing through a ravine in the middle of a city? The water is gray, the walls are green. Is this even sanitary? Zebo Extreme Hepatitis and Dysentery. You can hear car horns honking as you race down this sewage canal. Even the UI looks decorated with vomit and diarrhea. 
And why is there so much graffiti? Man, you gotta be about that life to rappel down a sewage canal to spray your tag. Oh, and apparently, for these people, this is like their front lawn. That door almost looks like it opens into the ravine. Brazil, I have so many questions. Like, you're, you're a gigantic country. This cannot be the only place to have your tubing race, right? Okay, it looks like the other two tracks are a little more uh, sanitary. Still an odd choice. But of course, I mean no disrespect. Brazil, you do you. What the hell do I know anyway? But of course, the only important question here is, is it any good? <laughs> not, not really. I don't know. It's fine. I love the insane way the water textures look. It reminds me a lot of Alpine Racer. But this game is also shockingly kind of tame speed-wise. At certain times, the water seems to be flowing extremely quick. Yet, even with the boost, I'm not really going. Oh, and I got last place, but somehow got the second best time. You've got some Mario Kart style weapons, one of which is the boomerang. Cute, guys. Speaking of which, uh, the boomerang actually works well in this game. I got dead last yet again, but I was able to steer with some degree of accuracy. There is your poll quote. Though Musty said that this and Rolima are very Brazilian sports. So for what it's worth, while these are basically just racing games, they are specifically representing sports seldom seen in gaming. It's just a shame they weren't better represented. So the Zebo Extreme games have proven to be fine, I guess. Technically, they are all system exclusives, but nothing to really get excited for. However, they would end the series on a high note with the best one, Jetboard. I mean, it's the best one despite being the most we already have that at home game I've ever played. Zebo Extreme Jetboard is a competent wave race clone, which will always net you brownie points for me. But it is the only Zebo Extreme game with decent controls. I mean, they're still not great, as you can see by how many times I ran into the buoys, but it's the only Zebo Extreme game I looked forward to going back to when I played them all again with the boomerang, which works because you have to make lots of super sharp turns to make some of these checkpoints. Holy crap, it works? It is decent on a controller and decent on the boomerang. Uh, that is until you realize it's four freaking laps of this. I have sacrificed my brain for the Zebo. I am not sacrificing my body too. Call it pride, but I refuse to go to my doctor to ask for a physical therapy because of a zebo related work injury. There are only three tracks, easy, medium, and hard. There are apparently tricks you can do that I didn't notice that were right there on the loading screen. Though near as I can tell, they don't do anything. They give you points, but there's no score. Maybe it increases your boost, which in this game is actually pretty fun and useful because of these crazy jumps. But also, why isn't the water moving at all? Like, not a single wave. Well, I don't see the moon up in the sky, no stars, not even, I don't even see the sun. Where is the light coming from? I mean, even Rally Master has some lens flare. What kind of purgatorial void do these four kids live in? And something I've not yet talked about is that in each of the five Zebo Extreme games, they have these same four characters, all with different outfits and designs for each game. Meaning, someone had to draw 20 different profile pictures which seems like more work than anyone should give or have to do for the Zebo. And throughout these five games, with each of these four characters, it is unclear what, or even if, there are any differences between them other than their favorite cult. But I felt like it was worth highlighting for posterity, so whoever you are, we shout out to you. You probably worked harder than you really should have, and I hope you were compensated for it. And that is it for 2009 Zebo Year One. It works out rather nicely that the Zebo library splits evenly right down the middle. 29 games in 2009, 28 games in 2010. Actually, it was 30 games and 27 games. I did in fact get a release date wrong for one game, but didn't spot that mistake until way later in producing this video. I will point it out later when it happens, but we are still about halfway through running the Zebo gauntlet. And what a year it was? I found this quote from Tech Toys business manager where they boasted that there would be more than 40 titles by year in 2009 and more than 100 by 2010. And yeah, sorry for spoiling things, but that did not happen. It is not going to get any better from here on out. But before we continue on with what came out on the Zebo, let's talk about what didn't come out on the Zebo, the unreleased games, because there were a few. Actually, I think it's fair to assume that there were a lot of games planned for the Zebo, but there are a few that we can confirm, including one very significant absence, Sega. There's absolutely no Sega presence on the Zebo at all. Now you gotta remember that this is Tech Toy, a company famous for selling Master System and Mega Drive plug-and-plays well into the 2010s. 
So much so that Tech Toy's unofficial mascot is Sonic the Hedgehog. For example, the Zebo Boomerang box came with some inserts, uh, instructions, a certificate, and a list of approved Tech Toy repair shops. And who is this guy hogging up most of the top fold? Well, that is Sonic Advance 2, Sonic the Hedgehog. And then there's Sonic Adventure Sonic at the bottom. Yet, there was no Sonic on the Zebo. No, wait a minute, Uncle Derek, you put Sonic on the thumbnail of the video, but there's no Sonic on Zebo? Why are you lying? Well, that's because Tech Toy lied about it too. I'm just trying to give you the most authentic Zebo experience possible, okay? Tech Toy themselves advertised Sonic Adventure on their official website. And not just Sonic, Crazy Taxi, Virtual Tennis 3, and Street Fighter Alpha. These games were never released on Zebo, yet here they were on the Zebo website. Now, these pictures have been scrubbed off of whatever was hosting them, but someone on Reset Era managed to find them. And you can see that they really were there on the Wayback Machine by hovering your mouse over the image. And according to Wayback Machine, these pictures were on the site for at least as far back as December 08, six months before launch, to late February 2009, three months before launch. And then the site went all flash sometime after launch. Also, check out that temp box art for the Zebo Extreme Games. They were thinking of calling them the Extreme Games, which like, at least a decade too late. Come on, y'all. But those are the big four. If you were even advertised on a Zebo system box and in commercials, Crazy Taxi did have a Brew OS version, and since Zebo also runs on Brew, here is the LG AX840 version played on a Zebo, and it looks rough even for a Zebo. I would imagine an official Zebo version would have to look better than this. Virtual Tennis 3 is a big mystery. Uh, Virtual Tennis had flip phone and smartphone versions, so the Zebo should have been possible. Street Fighter Alpha, as we will see a little later. Zebo saw the release of arcade games, all of which used an emulator. Street Fighter Alpha was apparently going to be one such emulated game. As such, there's footage of what could have been. It honestly looks like it could have been a pretty solid port. But then again, with that controller, I have my doubts. Not sure why it never came out, but I imagine Capcom just did not want to put in the effort after Resident Evil 4. But the big one is, of course, Sonic Adventure. Now, being fair, this image here on the website is the only direct evidence of Sonic Adventure being announced for the Zebo. Sonic on the boomerang insert was probably just, again, Sonic being Tech Toy's mascot. I'm sure this insert was packaged along with other Tech Toy things, not just Zebo stuff. Now, given what we have all seen, what the Zebo can do, I have serious doubts it could run Sonic Adventure. I've seen speculation that Sonic Jump was actually meant to be the Sonic game for Zebo, suggesting that putting Sonic Adventure up on the website here was just a mistake. And it's not a bad theory. The timeline of Sonic Jump coming on phones and the Zebo launching it lines up pretty well, but I don't buy it. Sonic the Hedgehog is one franchise Brazilians definitely know. You could not sell them what is essentially a fancy Flash game and try and convince them it's a real Sonic game. Now, there are claims that Adventure was prototyped for the Zebo, but abandoned way early on. If Sonic Adventure was really going to happen, it would have had to have been shrunken way down like Resident Evil 4, which only came to Zebo because Capcom had a freshly made mobile version lying around. Sega had no such version of Adventure lying around and either didn't or couldn't spend the time and energy to make a whole new port just for the Zebo even though it probably would have been just a glorious dumpster fire, oh my god. Now, maybe if the Zebo had performed better, Sonic 4 would have come to the system because Sega has put that game everywhere it could. The whole thing is strange because Tech Toy and Sega had such a close relationship. In fact, Tech Toy's non-Zebo holiday products for 2009 had a bunch of Sega stuff. So I guess Sega just went, nah, to the Zebo, but kept working with Tech Toy. One final unreleased game that was not on the website, Plants vs. Zombies. I discovered this one from some old tweets from Susana Bueno, who was QA leadership and a vocal Zebo supporter on Twitter at the time, and a Zebo fan account. Yes, really, a Zebo fan account, both hyping up Plants vs. Zombies. This never happened. And since PopCap had such a presence on the Zebo, it is any wonder why it didn't make it. But okay, let's get back to it. The Zebo gauntlet must be run. We start Zebo year two in February. Yes, February, because Zebo had no games in January. Uh, what's worse, there was only one game in February, Zebo Sports Dodgeball. Just like with Zebo Tennis and Volleyball, it's got a really fun, cartoony look. I like that it's like on a road in a neighborhood. So it's all like you and like your neighbor friends coming together to play. It's wholesome, it's fun. And plus it nails the most important thing in Dodgeball. 
It is very fun to beam someone dead in the face. Queimado. A good satisfying thud, and their heads nearly snap off their body. Man, you know, on second thought, these kids ain't playing around. Personally, I just stay home where it's safe and play video games. With the boomerang, you don't control movement. Just dodge, catch, and throw, and it works really well. Straight up. It's not bad. Also, it's just dodgeball. I mean, that's it. It's, it's, it's good dodgeball, but, but that's it. If these games were packaged together like in a Wii Sports bundle, sure, by itself, I can't imagine even kids getting too excited about this. Oh, and something I forgot to mention with tennis and volleyball is that all the Zeebo Sports games are running off of the Crazy Ball engine, their very own proprietary game engine. I want to make sure you heard me there. They made their own custom Zeebo game engine. So you see what I mean when I say that despite everything, they were really going for it? But not much was coming out because the next game for Zebo in 2010 was a pair released on March 9th. Toy Raid and Peggle. I'm sure you all know Peggle. It's one of the greatest slash most infuriating games ever made. An absolute banger. That had already been released on at least 10 different systems and platforms. Zebo needed Peggle like it needed a start button. The only question is, why now? And the other game, Toy Raid. From Flying Tiger Entertainment, developers of Time Crisis, Project Titan, and No Rules Get Fat, comes the next Zebo banger. Man. Brazil, I'm so sorry. There was hype for the system because there was hope that it could have been something, but. Man. I don't understand why it's called Toy Room. Like, these yeah. aren't toys. You're... Yeah, yeah, it's something like <laughs> The next game would not drop until April 12th, which I just want to make sure we're all keeping score here. April 12th is past the 100 day mark for the new year. 2010 is a quarter over, and Zebo has just gotten its fourth game. Uh, however, it's a Zebo exclusive, and an exclusive that's not a sports or a racing game. Okay, and I'm gonna actually attempt to say this. I, I practiced it. Here we go. Un jogo de ovos, or a game of eggs. A cute platformer based on a Mexican animated film, a film of eggs. That's right, one of the few exclusives for the system comes from Mexico. So here is where Mexico, and I'm sorry, Mexico has to take ownership of the Zebo. They actually advertise this one pretty hard. Here's a game show. <laughs> Una maravillosa plataforma Zeebo. Juega, aprende, conéctate. Uh, it was a packing game with a system that also included a DVD of the movie. Uh, here's a commercial where they all get drunk on wine. This is a kid's show. Una porra al Zeebo. Except, yo, uh, this game kind of slaps. I mean, it is a pretty standard platformer, but there's nuanced movement and attacks. Like, it's incredibly bare bones presentation wise, and I'm pretty sure you have unlimited lives, but the wall jumping and attacking with your egg cane thingy, it's all pretty fun. And there's lots of levels and the levels are kind of big. There's a lot of spoken dialogue, which was a big surprise. And when you beat a level, the egg dances while holding its butt, which I have no idea what that's about, but Makes me laugh every time. It's the type of game where the more I played, the better I understood its nuances and actually enjoyed it. I mean, yo, port this to the Switch, charge a dollar, and I can see Ant Dude including this in another Switch eShop's gem video. Uh, why am I here? Or maybe Zebo Madness has officially set in again. I don't know. I kind of liked this game, which at this point is high, high praise. And it was not a moment too soon as the Zebo would enter what I consider one of its darkest moments. April 2010 would be one of the most prolific months for the Zebo in terms of game releases. Why? Because the system got seven Data East arcade games Caveman Ninja, Karnov's Revenge, Magical Drop 3, Spin Master, Street Hoop, Super Burger Time, and Wizard Fire, aka Dark Seal 2. Now, near as I can tell, these are all fine ports, but like, who cares? Wh who? Wh what are you doing? Who's tripping over themselves to buy a Zebo so they can play Day to East arcade games? No one. So this is a low point for numerous reasons. 
First of all, though I'm not sure how many people were really paying attention at this point, but it's been four months and Zebo has seen just 11 games, seven of which were just emulated arcade games. It is not a great look. Second, none of these games have been translated. In fact, there is a message at the start of each one that says, yeah, we didn't bother to translate it, so like, good luck with that, I guess. It is bold to tell your customers up front, hey, just so you know, we did as little as possible. Enjoy. And lastly, this is what the Zebo should have been. This right here, this was it. This should have been what the Zebo was. They should have ditched trying to be a competitive modern console and just been a virtual console box. I mean, plug and play systems packed with classic 80s and 90s games would continue to be made in Brazil for years and years to come. Zebo could have been the one to rule them all. A digital library, hundreds of classic games, all for a few bucks downloaded at home. And the thing is, I don't know if this was a direction they genuinely tried to pivot to. I want to give them the benefit of the doubt that for some reason, this just wasn't possible. So the next best thing was Wii style casual gaming and kids safe internet instead. And at the time, that genuinely seemed like a good direction to go. But after that deluge of Data East games, Zebo got another game on May 4th. Dark Seal. Another Data East game, the Zebo's 12th game of the year. So looking at the scoreboard, only 12 games in just over four months and eight of them were emulated Data East arcade ports. From here until the end of the year, 15 more games would hit the Zebo, which I know sounds bad, and it is. Here we go, we're on the home stretch. Let's wrap this up. There were two more games in May 2010, and for whatever it's worth, one week after Dark Seal, the final Zebo Sports game dropped on May 11th. Zebo Sports Pateka, or Hand Shuttlecock. It's like volleyball's weird cousin the same way tennis and badminton are weird cousins. But yeah, it's another Zebo Sports game that should have been on a compilation and not a standalone game. It's... it's fine. It's fine. It actually makes me appreciate dodgeball more, because this, tennis, and volleyball are all basically the same game. Like all the others, the computer is absolutely no challenge whatsoever. Really, my biggest opponents were myself and boredom. Okay, look, I want to believe that the computer opponents in the Zebo Sports games do get tougher the further you get in, but expecting people to play for that long is asking a lot, asking too much, because on the surface, these games are, they're fine. Again, the Nintendo Me cartoony aesthetic is great, and they're classic sports games that anyone can pick up and understand. But there's, but there's nothing here. It's not good, but it's also, it's not bad. Really, it's the worst thing. Bland. Bland and very uninteresting. But hey, what about those red and green pads on the floor? You probably aren't asking. Well, they enhance or reduce your character's speed bars. But because they reset after someone scores, and the AI is just, of course, absolute trash, rounds are too short for it to ever fill up, so it, it's never an issue. It may as well not be there. I played exactly one game that lasted long enough for the bars to fill up. And there was no difference. I, c I couldn't tell any difference. It was the same thing. I don't know. Nothing. Oh, and then watching this footage again, you can see that this match only went on for so long because I kept returning out of bounds shots from the trash computer. Oh, but I guess the boomerang was really good in this game. I didn't have the timing issues that I did uh, with tennis. And hey, why is there hardly a crowd at all? There's like no one sitting back there. What is going on? Dodgeball was just kids in a neighborhood, so no crowd there, of course. Big crowds on the beach for volleyball, and though they're just barely in the frame, tennis was packing them in. Uh, however, Shuttlecock here looks like a sparse collection of relatives and work friends too polite to say, no, I am not going to your Shuttlecock tournament. <sighs> Sorry, I was really struggling with things to talk about here. I had to go do some digging to see if there was anything interesting about these games. And I actually discovered a few things. On Moby Games, a transcript of the official description was posted, and it states there that this and the other Zebo Sports games are boomerang controller only, and that they patched in regular control support later? <laughs> this is wild for a number of reasons. First of all, the Zebo Sports games are among the few Zebo games that are two player, which means I guess they expected people to buy two of these things? Because if you didn't know, Zebo Systems did not come with the boomerang controllers. And if it's true they had to patch in controller support later, that means people had to have been complaining. Imagine 
being one of the few people out there for the Zebo, and you see the brand new game from Tectoy themselves, so you get it immediately, only to find out you don't have the right controller and can't play it. You just wasted your money. I mean, wasted your money again, but anyway. This is all ignoring the fact that volleyball and tennis are terrible with the boomerang, despite apparently being made for it. I'll say it again, man. There is no bottom. There is only deeper with the Zebo. What the f***? Another thing worth bringing up, a big feature of these Evo sports games was the ability to post to online leaderboards, but that's of course all gone now. But that kind of says it all, right? Online leaderboards were a big feature for these games, which really tells you just how little there was in each one. And since I've now covered all four of these Evo sports games, uh, they're fine. They exist. Two and a half out of five. The next game comes May 20th, 2010, just a few days shy of the one year anniversary, and the Zebo celebrates the occasion as only the Zebo could, with the Breakout Clone. Yep, this is Alien Breaker. And before the game even starts, we see the logo, Vega Mobile, which right away is trouble. No shade to Vega, this game actually is, you know, fine but it is right away letting you know that, yep, this is just a mobile game. An iPhone game released in 2008, and yep, it is just a breakout clone. But I guess every system has to have one, so here we go. There's this one level where it looks like you're attacking a space invader. Nothing quite like a game reminding me of a better one I'd rather be playing. Yeah, but it does have a lot of power-ups. I managed to get the multi-ball power-up three times in a row, and the chaos that unleashed made me feel something that resembled excitement. But there is also a slow power-up. Slow. And let me tell you, nothing gives you existential dread like a slow-moving game of Breakout. Arcade has 10 different planets with different difficulties ranging from 1 to 5. I tried a more difficult one, but I guess I had to unlock it? <laughs> nope! There are also extra modes like Challenge and Fronten, but they are locked unless you finish the other zones, and I do not think I could stay awake that long. What is crazy is the title screen music has this thumping, intense, trance banger, like this classic, corny, mid-2000s electronic music. But then when you start the game... No music! No in-game trance bangers! Like, how low you gotta be to tease someone on trance bangers? Like, clearly you got them! Clearly you got the bangers! But you won't put them in the game! It's, it's just mean. It's just mean. On the title screen, Atomic Cat gets a credit right there, uh, which is nice because I guess that is the only place in the game you hear music. Anyway, Mr. Cat's music has been preserved on archive.org, which is great because his website became a homepage for a massage resort at some point. We need you, Atomic Cat. We need the bangers. But anyway, that is Alien Breaker, and that is it for May, which had three games if you count the Day to East game, Dark Seal. So another month down. You know, if I didn't know the history of this machine, just looking at the games, I'd say the Zebo was made for grandparents to unknowingly troll their grandkids. Like, oh, just leave the grandkids with me for the weekend, I've got plenty of games for them to play. And then you trap that grandma's for a whole weekend with nothing but the Zebo. Or maybe that's just a recurring nightmare I've been having. This is what too much Zebo can do to a person. But I must press on. Nothing stops the Zebo gauntlet, except several months between videos. But let's keep going. June 2010 saw two whole games, but both from Zebo Interactive themselves, and both released on June 2nd. The first is just kind of baffling. Zebo FC Foot Camp. Uh, it's baffling because the last soccer game the Zebo got was a year earlier on launch day. Except this isn't even a full soccer game, it's a mini game collection. Alright, so what do we got? A uh, shot on goal. I got 60 seconds to score as many goals as possible. Gotta try and hit the bonus pads. I can pass my teammates for an assist. I can turn the goldie into a chicken. <laughs> okay, that's that's pretty awesome. Next, free shot. This is almost like mini golf with 10 different setups with angle, power, and wind to affect your shots. Dribble, where you have five seconds to input a command to break their freaking ankles, hell yeah. This becomes the most intense game of Jet Set Radio I have ever played. By the end, you have five seconds to hit 20 inputs. Have mercy. Ow. It's really the half-circle twists on the analog stick that get you. I actually found this way easier on the boomerang, where the circle motions are just cranking right or left. The next game is Kick-Ups, where your goal is to defeat gravity 
and birds? Yeah, take that, birds. A and that's it. That's it? I mean, they all play decently well. I had some fun here, but after a couple of minutes, I was frantically searching the menus. Like, there had to be more. This can't just be four minigames? Oh wait, what's this option here? Z-Boids? Why, that is the other game released June 2nd. Z-Boids. Uh, not really a game, but an avatar creator. Their very own Mii Channel. Right down to the music. Hey, do you want to hear the Mii Channel music? But in Zebo core hey, It's not bad, actually. But it is a little sad just how hard Zebo tried to be the Wii. But anyway, here you can make your own little Zebo buddy, dress him up, and then pose him for the perfect profile pic. We made our own Z-Boyd named Zebro, the most swagged out dude on Zebonet. Oh, is swagged out a dated and cringy term? Am I not talking about freaking Z-Boyds here? The most cringy and dated thing possible. Ha 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 ha, jack my swag. The exciting thing is you can load them into a rocket and blast them into other games like Zebo Foot Camp and another game we'll be talking about in a minute. Except that when Zebo went offline, so did the ability to bring your Z-Boyds out of their digital cage. And just for the record, Z-Boids dropped in early June 2010, and Zebo end of operation was September 2011, meaning there existed only 15 months where gaming with your Z-Bro was even possible, which, don't lie, is still longer than you expected. This would be on my wish list for Zebo emulation, to be able to free my Z-Bro from his digital hell, where he can break ankles and murder birds just like he was made for. But Zebo Foot Camp and Z-Boids were the only new games in June 2010. It was crickets until July 14th, where Zebo got its final PopCap game, Zuma's Revenge. Honestly, maybe my personal favorite one. But also, who cares? July 27th, there was a pair of bangers, Bad Dudes, and Heavy Barrel. Okay, Bad Dudes has always been a little overrated, but Heavy Barrel has always been rad as hell. But again, two more emulated Data East games. Who cares? Nothing in August, nothing. Three games in May, two games in June, three games in July, nothing in August. That is one hell of a Zebo summer. And what's worse is September only had one game. Disney All-Star cards dropped on the 21st, so just shy of a full two month drought. This is a mini game collection where you can play games like Golden Mickey, which for me growing up was called Old Maid, Donald's Go Fish, Daisy's Memory Master, Goofy's Solitaire, and Minnie's Mau Mau with all your favorite Disney pals. Uh, there's art to unlock from winning games. Like, actually a lot of art. Like, a lot of art. Like, what the hell? But other than that, yo, it's a bunch of Flash games. Which today would be ad-riddled free downloads for smartphones, or those weird games built into TVs and Teslas. My point is that throughout history, this type of game was never something you charged money for. Wait, I got a great idea. Yeah? And it's Zebo. <laughs> One game was released in October. One. But we do return to some semblance of greatness with our last Fish Labs classic Power Boat Challenge. It's basically Rally Master Pro, but in water, with opponent racers, and way slower. This game kind of feels like the Zebo itself, somehow still pushing along. I will say Powerboat Challenge has some fun personality and style. First of all, we got a tutorial, which Rally Master Pro probably could have used. But I don't know, it's also not that complicated. Be on the correct side of the checkpoints. The closer you are, the more boost you get. I don't know, it's not rocket science. But this game has some fun style between the four main characters. I liked Zed because he has an auto-tuned voice. Hey, what's up? Which was very fitting for the late 2000s. It's also fitting because Fish Labs would later port Saints Row 3 to various places, and that game also had a character that only talked in autotune. But other than that, it's a solid racer, well made, but it's basically just wave race, but kind of boring. Upgrading your rig is a must, and it gets expensive fast. Some races felt impossible to actually complete without the upgrades, making the game a bit of a grind. The AI here seems to have just gotten stuck and died. You're really hot. If the part needs some stroking, don't go to the gr- Bro! Wow! Although I guess he is canonically speaking in auto-tune here. Maybe it sounds smoother when T-Pain is saying it. By the way, this game is supposed to have boomerang support, but I could not get the damn thing to work for some reason. It's almost like it's glitched out, maybe corrupted, maybe? I don't know. It's, just, it's probably nothing. Probably nothing. But to sum up, you can do a lot worse than Power Boat Challenge. And with that, Fish Labs exits the stage with a pretty much spotless Zebo record. Not sure that's actually something they should be proud of, but congrats to them anyway. But again, that was the sole game for October 2010. That is 
two games in three months. But the real death rattle of the Zebo as an actual active member of the video game scene was in November and December 2010, where the final six games were released. Starting with Reckless Racing, another polar bit joint! But it is yet another racing game, but this one has a fun arcade style with a top-down aesthetic and some really fun style that's leaning heavily into the Deliverance redneck aesthetic, right down to the banjo that plays on the title screen, uh, which I will not be playing for you here because I'll probably just get flagged. Um, uh, I don't think this white void is supposed to be here! Okay, so when I first ran through all these games just to test them, I did not see a chunk of the track missing. I wasn't recording at the time, but I definitely would have written that down. I restarted the race, I also tried restarting the game, it was still missing a giant chunk of the map. This actually ties in with our next game, Alice in Wonderland. Based on the moment Tim Burton stopped being a respectable filmmaker. This is a simple puzzle platformer that has you switching between characters and using their abilities, or at least the first level or two are because that's how far I got before the game stopped loading for me. At all. I tested the game, I took some preliminary notes, and then when I came back to play it again, it would not load past the menu. But this game also came out on iOS. This is not a Zebo exclusive. Really, you're not missing a whole lot anyway. And this may go back to something I said way, way earlier. Ridge Racer corrupts your games and maybe even bricks your system. I have no idea why the boomerang wouldn't work on Powerboat Challenge, why white voids swallowed up chunks of reckless racing, and why Alice in Wonderland would not load past the menu. I talked to our Zebo hookup, Rock Band KB, and they had no idea why these things were happening. But in my research, I found claims that Ridge Racer was dangerous to play. And because it was a launch game and just truly terrible, Ridge Racer was one of the first games I played and recorded footage. I guess I cannot say for certain, but it would explain these issues. And I may be lucky it didn't get worse. Maybe I should be thankful it sucked so much that I couldn't stomach to play Ridge Racer again, because doing so, could have screwed up more games and perhaps the system itself. But it is also possible that nobody at Zebo tested the system with this many games installed, with every single game installed on the hard drive. That's also possible. But these games were playing fine before, but I maybe am dumping on Ridge Racer just a little too much. Maybe, I don't know. Regardless of that, there's really not much to say about Reckless Racing or Alice in Wonderland. However, if you want to play Reckless Racing right now, it and its sequels are still available on the App Store. You can pause this video and go play a game that was on the Zebo right now on a smartphone. It was patched just three years ago in the App Store. It's even still available for old iPads. I mean, talk about a commitment to preservation. It's not like the game is necessarily anything too special, but this has got to be one of the oldest games on the App Store. So that with the Zebo connection is why I just had to scoop it up. I had to, in fact, it was released on Zebo just two weeks after making its debut on the iOS and Android. Reckless Racing was a contemporary release for a Zebo game. So an interesting bit of history for this game. These are the weird places the Zebo will take you. I am a little sad this video is almost over, but we shall continue. Up next, the third game released in November 2010 and another of the Zebo's few exclusives, Torque and Crawl. This is another Vega mobile joint, and I can say right away, a lot more memorable than Alien Breaker. Though it is not totally original, it is a ripoff of Snow Bros, which itself was a great spin on Bubble Bobble, which are not the worst games to copy. Here you can encase enemies in ice or fire and then push them off the board, netting you bonus points for colliding with other enemies. If you don't have power-ups, you just clobber them with your club. When you beat all the baddies, Hallelujah plays, and an eagle swoops down and takes you to the next level. Okay, uh, Hallelujah doesn't really make sense for a game whose subtitle is a prehistoric adventure. We hadn't invented God yet. And why an eagle and not a pterodactyl? When you take damage, the worst ah sound I've ever heard plays. What was that even recorded on? Oh my god, <laughs> then there's a scream power up. W wow, move over Kirby. There are a lot of power-ups you can get, including farts! You can suffocate enemies using the fart special power! Now here is a Zebo screen worth printing out and framing. Bonus levels are auto-scrollers, they feel like I'm playing the Ice Clamor level from Smash Melee. There's an endless mode for this too, and at the start it says, PREPARE TO ESCAPE! And why would I want to escape the Zebo? I love it here! What else? Uh, I mean, there are bosses, which I didn't expect. 
Uh, later levels have clouds that obstruct your view. I got to an ice world with slippery floors, which is apparently one third the way through the whole game. There is yet again no in-game music, but a fun thumping tribal song on the title screen. They also get a credit like Atomic Cat. I have no idea why Vega Mobile made their games like this. But in the end, Torque and Crawl is fine for what it is. But what it is, is a well-made but very rudimentary platformer that, outside of the fart power-up and a funny death sound, is almost aggressively unremarkable. Which is not great for one of the few Zebo exclusives that's not a sports or racing game. We move on to December 2010, the final games, and believe it or not, but they kind of go out with a bang. December 7th brought the fifth and final game from Zebo MVP's Polarbit. Hell yeah, another mobile top-notch title. They ended up being one of the system's most loyal, dropping games at the very beginning and end of its lifespan. Raging Thunder 2. No, not Rolling Thunder 2. With all the Namco games on here, that's actually what I was hoping for. And I know that banger is a word that I have dropped a lot in these two videos for some reason. But damn it if Polarbit didn't drop one last banger for the Zebo. Raging Thunder 2 is straight up a clone of Burnout 3. It's fast, it's loose, it's a bit of a technical mess, and an absolute blast to play. On a system that had 13 racing games, pretty much a quarter of the entire library, this one here is the best one because it is just fun as hell. It is janky and sloppy as all get out, but it is just my kind of thing. I mean, the only thing it's missing is some Reggie in the full effect and My Chemical Romance on the soundtrack. Probably my favorite thing is Instant Race. Random car, random track, not a second to waste, let's get going. Okay, well then it's a 15 second load time, but then, BAM, we in it. And then it just crashed on me. Seriously, I was playing this game for almost an hour, legit having a blast when suddenly, Yeah, I don't know, it just died. I don't know what happened, but I feel like this is probably Ridge Racer's fault as well. I guess the good news is that Raging Thunder 2 was released everywhere, and I mean really like everywhere. I was able to find on Polarbit's website, the games page, and I just wanna say that I've never seen a unicorn, but right here, you can see Palm App Catalog, Intel App Up, Zebo, Nokia OV Store, and Samsung apps all advertised in one place. And I don't mean on the Wayback Machine, their website is still up. You can check out their games and they still have broken links to Zebo and OV and Palm Pilot stores. It's like an actual museum exhibit. Anyway, this is easily one of the best games on Zebo, even if it's not a very good version of the game. The only major downfall is that it didn't come out sooner. And then just two days later on December 9th, Ultimate Chess 3D dropped. Now what's strange about this one is this is one of the games that was advertised on the Tech Toy website way, way back before the system launched. But it came out two years later? That seems weird. Uh, so I went and double checked the release date and actually I did get this one wrong. It came out on December 9th, but in 2009, not 2010. So December 09 was actually six games with the Zebo, not five, my bad. It doesn't really change much because, well, Ultimate Chess 3D is just basically Battle Chess 3D, meaning it's chess, but with style and fun animations. We got some cool ass robots beating each other up when a piece takes another piece. It's pretty cool, but the board doesn't have these cool robots. It's just a regular chess board until someone takes a piece which I have to say is a really big disappointment. There's also some pretty bad load times for the animations, and the animations didn't have sound effects, so they just kind of felt limp and weak, and that's basically the whole thing here, isn't it? There are upgrades and custom gear you can outfit your robot pieces with, but if I can't see these cool robots all the time, and if it's not exciting when they fight, then what are we even doing here? I get that the Zebo was trying to have 3D graphics to convince people that it was a real big boy system, but really they should have just made normal chess and packaged it with checkers, parcheesi, and backgammon. But that was 2009, sorry for missing that one. Back in 2010, December 21st saw Monica's Gang Let's Play number one, a minigame collection featuring cute cartoon characters uh, that remind me of the Peanuts click. I guess every country's got a famous cartoon about a gang of little kids, huh? You know, we're not so different after all, are we? The Monica's Gang IP has a storied history with Tectoy. For example, a lot of the Wonder Boy games were reskinned as Monica games, where she uses her bunny plushie as a damn sword. 
Now it's suspect that there is a number one on the end of this Zebo game. That is because this is a simple minigame collection of semi-educational games for kids, and there was a plan for nine of these, unless the Google translation is off on this article I found, but nine of them? Or the Wikipedia page that linked me to this article said a, I don't know, the important thing is, this was supposed to be a series of exclusives for the Zebo. And well, as this was the second to last game ever released on the system, my only takeaway is that, damn, against everything, they were really trying right up to the end, weren't they? But on to the game. It's very cute, classic cartoon stuff. Uh, it's got lots of spoken dialogue. Like a lot. Like, for f sake, kids, shut up. Can I play the game already? So we got six kids, six mini games, all hanging out back here on the trail. Uh, we got this Nelson Muntz looking jerk who apparently kidnapped your stuffed animal, who I'm just gonna call Baby Fluffy, kidnapped Baby Fluffy and hit them in a hedge maze. And then you clobber the crap out of him when you rescue it. Hell yeah, Monica, don't hold back. Uh, next we have Smarty Pants with Jigsaw Puzzles. Wow, he even sounds like Martin Prince. With a million hit points and maximum charisma! Again, I'm not sure what they're saying, but yeesh, kids shut up, let me just solve the puzzle. Wait, did Monica give both these kids a shiner and then make them take a selfie with her? Is she the actual bully? Pigpen here needs help across the water in a reverse frogger type game and whoa, whoa, whoa. How strong is this little girl that she could one arm it with another kid in a chest high current? Is that Monica or baby Wonder Woman? Okay, so I guess it is canon that Monica has superhuman strength. I guess it's no wonder she was able to stomp through Monster World with only baby Fluffy. Okay, actually the bunny's name is Samson. And I bet you didn't expect Brazilian children's cartoon lore when you woke up this morning, huh? Nothing but the dumbest and most useless information. That's the Uncle Derek promise. Okay, next it's a uh, blonde angel kid? Or is he dead? Okay, apparently this kid's name is just Angel, all right. Uh, their mini game is shooting the matching color balloons. This would probably be a good like colorblind test for kids. Later it's shapes and colors. Eh, it's not bad for kids, really. Next, Curly Sue over here has a coloring game, which is prepping kids for MS Paint and Photoshop, legit necessary life skills. And finally, Hungry Kid here by the fence has a memory game. Near as I can tell, uh, that's it. But no notes, really. It's a well-made kids game, which at this point was Zebo's target demographic. The most noteworthy thing about this game, it's not actually the game, but that a playthrough on the Zplay YouTube channel has 14 million views, making it probably the single most popular thing to ever come from the Zebo. It's too bad they couldn't get any more of these games out because it seems like they had a genuine hit on their hands. But it was not to be. On December 22nd, 2010, just one day after Monica's Gang number one, came the final Zebo game, Zebo FC Super League. Finally, the Zebo gets its second real soccer slash football game and one from the first party team at Zebo Interactive Studios. Okay, maybe not quote unquote real soccer. It is a fast paced arcade style game with power ups and the same cartoony style seen in the other Zebo sports games. This is another game you were able to drop your Z-Boys into, <sighs> but I will never be able to see Zebro lace up. Or maybe it was better I spared him the humiliation of playing for me. <laughs> there was clearly some nuance to the controls that I missed due to the language barrier because I know I'm bad at soccer games, but I was getting my ass handed to me. <laughs> Damn. Seems fun, but it's nothing you couldn't get from a Mario Strikers game. But ultimately, not a bad send-off for the Zebo. And that closes out year two for the Zebo. Though the system wouldn't officially die until September 2011, there would not be a single game released for the entire calendar year of 2011. And it did really completely die in September 2011. Remember, this is a digital-only console, so when they turned the servers off, whatever was still on the system was all you can play. Luckily, the ability to sideload these games onto systems exists. But that, my friends, is all 57 Zebo games. Here's a chart I made with some stats on the Zebo games releases, and it really puts in perspective how dire things were. 29 months on the market, but only 20 months of actively releasing games. 2009 had 3.75 games a month for the eight months it was on the market, and 2010 had 2.25 games a month released for the whole year. That is 2.9 games a month during the period it was releasing games, and 1.9 games a month for the entire 29 months of its life. 
there were 17 months where only one or zero games were released, more than half of the system's 29 month run. The Zebo really is a fascinating system. I've truly loved diving into its history and then the games. It's so easy to just point and laugh at the Zebo. Sometimes it's impossible not to, but I wanted to give its games and its history a fair shake because that's what they deserve. These are the stories that really make me love video games, love this fascinating industry. Plus, it's also a great excuse to learn about other countries. The great thing about diving into the Zebo is that so much of it is still around. I mean, not the system or the games, but all this happened just as YouTube and Twitter were taking off. So many videos and comments and tweets and headlines and press releases are still up, or at least they were when I made these videos. I mean, I cannot tell you how many times I struggled with stopping myself falling further down rabbit holes and tangents, though I was trying to make the best and most thorough series of Zebo videos that I could make. This was my little contribution to the history of Zebo. Gone, but not forgotten, so long as I'm still around to talk about it. Hey, 2023 was a weird year. There is not going to be a six month break <laughs> before the next video, I swear. In fact, I might be able to do a corrections video on this because of uh, the reaction to all so many Brazilian speaking people and people that grew up with the Zebo or worked on the Zebo have actually like contacted or left comments and stuff like that and have corrected me on a few things that uh, I didn't know or I don't think were really known, at least not in the English speaking part of the web. So I could actually do a third video that's just like kind of corrections on a handful of things I got wrong. So if, hey, you know anything about Brazilian gaming, Mexican gaming, uh, the Zebo itself, tech toy, um, and I got something wrong or you have a fun factoid or hey, did you work on the Zebo? Um, hey, please leave a comment. Let me know. Um, I have enough that I probably could do a decent sized corrections video, but if I get any more, I might just do a third loose, loosey goosey third uh, just corrections video. Why not? M maybe I'll make another damn Zebo video. And with that, our Zebo saga has come to an end. I want to thank you for watching uh, any of these Zebo videos that we have made over the last couple of years. I have to give a huge shout out to Rockman KB. They are the ones who uh, sent us the fully stocked Zebo. They also sent us an iPad and an iPhone that had like Resident Evil. Uh, Degeneration, Resident Evil 4, and a bunch of other stuff on it. Uh, they, I could not, literally could not have made this video without them. And, um, you know, we've actually been working on these Zebo videos since like summer 2021. Uh, this, the first Zebo Passport was gonna come out actually in December 2021 after we crunched on the uh, uh, the Xbox One video, and I'm glad that we didn't end up doing that because I really, I really feel good that we, I wanted to take my time on these videos and make sure they were right. 2023 was a weird year, really challenging year, so I'm sorry I let that get to me, but I wanted to make sure I came back big, and I really wanted to make sure that I did this video right. So I'm really proud of these videos, but also it's a little bittersweet. I've had this video in particular, the Every Games uh, video here, in the back of my head for over, over a year, year and a half, um, and it's been a lot of fun to make. Uh, I'm really happy with how it turned out, but of course it wasn't me alone. I have to give a huge shout out to uh, Sober Dwarf, who, um, as it turned out, was uh, a big editor for almost every Zebo video we made. They had hands on this video. She was the primary editor on Resident Evil 4 uh, mobile, as well as the Crash Bandicoot Nitro Kart video, uh, the uh, Zebo Pass Mortem. And then they helped out with big chunks on the Every Zebo Game video. Also shout out to uh, Cass from B Bad Game Hall of Fame. She, she helped write on everything. Um, I think some of her notes also made it into the Every Zebo Game uh, video, but I primarily wrote the Every Zebo Game video because all I had to do was just play the game and kind of talk about it. Um, all the really heavy research and a lot of that uh, was a huge help from Cass. Uh, so shout out to her. And then, you know, the boy Adam, he helped out uh, doing a big chunk of the Every Zebo Games uh, video as well. And then, of course, Producer Grace was a big, big help. Uh, really, Producer Grace and Cass did the bulk of the writing of the uh, past mortem episode. I came in and kind of touched a lot of things up. Yeah, I'm like the final say on uh, these videos, but of course, you know, I have a lot of help. A lot of talented people help out with these projects. I'm so thankful for all of them who pitched in and helped make these stupid videos possible. And of course, all the people that support us on Patreon uh, and sticking around and still supporting me through this really weird year that I had in 2023. Uh, happy to end it here on a good note, on a high note. Oh yeah, and for Shelf Talk, just, you know, look at all our plushies. Check it out, we got the This Is Fine Dog. Then we got Dusa. And then we got Mog up here. Uh, the boy, the boy Matt McMuscles. Let's see. Uh, I got two Kirbys, double Kirbys. A Cacodemon back there. I got the, the sheep from uh, uh, Catherine. I got 
this Pac-Man ghost that somebody gave me years ago. Shout out to you, bro. I've, I've put this Pac-Man ghost in like every video maybe since they gave it to me. But hey, the Zebo is finally officially like behind me now. So I still have a lot of big projects that I want to do. And so um, I know this year was weird, uh, but the next year, you know, I always I always say this the end of every year. It's like next year, it's going to rock. Next year, it's, it's gonna we're going to crush it, okay? Maybe I won't. Maybe I will, but I always just think that I'm gonna. All right? That's that stay powerful attitude. Don't ever let the bastards get you down. You gotta keep moving forward no matter what. You gotta keep creating. You gotta keep working. And that's what, I just, I'm, that's what I'm gonna do. 16 years I've been doing this now. I ain't ready to retire. I ain't done yet. I still got, I still got so much stuff I wanna do yet. Okay? I'm not done. So you will see me real soon. And I will see you. And I will be so happy to see you again. Okay? So everybody, take care. Have a happy new year. Have a happy holidays. All that stuff. And you stay powerful. And I will see you again next year. Take care.